scholarly jury in history tries to convince us that Thucydides was born in approximately 460 BC, or 456 to 451 BC, and died around 396 BC. He was a wealthy aristocrat and politician from Athens. During the Peloponnesian War Thucydides was in command of the Athenian fleet, albeit unsuccessfully. He was subsequently banished from Athens for 20 years. He wrote his famous tractate during his sojourn in Thracia. Thucydides had received amnesty near the end of the war. He returned to Athens and died shortly afterwards. Historical tradition trusts Thucydides in his descriptions of military events, considering him an eyewitness and a participant. Thucydides himself writes the following, I was writing down the events witnessed by myself as well as what I had heard from others, after as meticulous a study of each fact as circumstances allowed. I have survived the entire war I understood it, and studied it attentively. The Thucydides Eclipse Tried is a very substantial argument proving that the history of the Peloponnesian War by Thucydides couldn't have been written earlier than the 11th century AD. It is most improbable that the tried is a fantasy of the author, since in that case a fitting astronomical solution would most probably have been non-existent. It is also hard to consider the eclipses an apocryphal part of the ancient text, since they fit the consecutive and detailed narration incredibly well. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece, and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fictional Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time. We all know the biblical tale of Moses upon the fiery mountain. The one about the cities of the plain destroyed in a fiery hailstorm whose description could refer to volcanic eruption. The fact that many biblical texts clearly refer to volcanic activity has been well known to historians for a long time. The word Zion is widely known. Theologians interpret it as pillar. Identifying Zion as Sinai and Horeb is common in both theology and Bible studies. Hieronymus in particular noted that, it appears that the same mountain is called by two different names, Sinai and Horeb. The believers believe everything the Bible tells them without questioning. Whereas the vehement atheists renounce everything the book has to say is nonsense, absurdity and malignant spells used for enslaving the people and keeping it obedient and ignorant. The rational person shall however try to think of what the ancient author could really be referring to. Volcanoes? But there aren't any active volcanoes anywhere in the Middle East, nor Northern Africa, nor most of continental Europe, for that matter. However, there is an exception, Italy and the famous Vesuvius. It is at a considerable distance from Palestine, granted. But let us sit down for a second, draw our breath and make the heretical presumption that the real events that became reflected in the book we know as the Bible really took place elsewhere. Despite of what the illustrations in the modern Bibles are telling us, This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fictional Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time.